Welcome, welcome. I'm so glad that you could join me for this very special episode of Art History with Sister Wendling. I'm very excited about today's journey. We'll be exploring the wonderful self-portraits that came out of the Documentation Age. The Documentation Age had many phases and can be particularly difficult to categorize. There were many subcategories. Technical publications was a particularly tumultuous age. The user education age settled down into a rather long, prosperous time. And then the instructional publishing age brought back more confusion and turmoil and resulted in very heavy drinking, debauchery and lechery among the artisans. Please come inside and we'll tour this lovely museum to view some of my personal favourites from that fascinating time. Let's begin with this lovely portrait. It is one of my favourites. It was created by Bob Bringhurst, an avid writer, an outdoorsman, an awfully good looking, don't you think? There is a common misbelief that he was born to a family of dung eaters, but that's never been proved. His use of brush stroke is magnificent, just magnificent. This portrait was uncovered just recently in the attic of a house that was getting a new roof. Just lovely. It was painted by Bob Fisher, a very systematic and technical man. With the most simple elements, he created such wonderfully complex work. He loved to include objects that reflected nature's bounty in his work. Can you see the little beetle that he holds in his hand? Isn't it just wonderful? This is a very special piece. The two artist friends, Craig Hoshan and Paul Carew, actually painted this piece together. Craig painted the top half and Paul did the bottom half. They worked collaboratively for many years until Paul dislocated his shoulder and decided to model nude for a series Craig created entitled Man It's Cold In Here. The remarkable thing about this era in art history is that there were quite a few women painters. This is one of my favourites done by a highly acclaimed artist named Bonnie Liebisch. Oh, what a marvel! She was one of the few artists that was able to earn her living entirely from art. Later, though, she accepted a job cleaning toilets and never created another work. Ugh, oh, such a pity. Such a great artist. This fellow, Chris Dahl, was quite a traveller. He spent much of his time in China studying the art of calligraphy, though he never included calligraphy in any of his pieces. There's a certain inscrutability to his work. Chris was a very verbal man, and his work reflects a maddening, one might say, hysterical quality, which is rather ironic since he spent his final days living in silence in a Buddhist monastery. When I want to sit and bask in calm beauty, I look at this painting. Conrad Chavez was a master at his craft, as well as a very proficient writer and photographer. He was born of aristocracy, and you can see it in the way he paints. His use of lavish color, texture, and that confidently bold stroke. Magnificent, really. Truly an amazing artist. Ah, and now we come to a Flemish master. Joan Vermeulen spent her life painting bureaucratic still lives. Look at the freedom of expression in her work. Astonishing. Comparable to the finest blue delft of the period. Oh, what can I possibly say about this work that hasn't already been said? David Butler was a man ahead of his time. He was openly criticized for his work with nudes and spent a great deal of time studying the French school, but was never able to paint anything other than nudes. What a bold and daring man. Of course, our tour wouldn't be complete without representing the Surrealistic School, which brings me to this painting by Joe Durazzo and Julie Brockmire. Isn't it just out of this world? Joe's passion wants to jump out of the canvas and dance around the floor glibly, while his cohort Julie ponders the nature of the universe. What a strange, strange work of art. Now here's one of my favorites, a real people's artist, Kelly Camel. She effortlessly produced some of the most popular paintings of her time. 
she's often portrayed cavorting with the menfolk, drinking, eating, and puking with the best of them. A remarkably robust artist. Her mother was a famous opera singer. Talent runs in this family. Now here's a beautiful painting with such spiritual energy. It was painted by a certain Susan Berry Price, and she remained one of the more enigmatic painters of the period. She was a Freemason and wrote cryptic letters to her lovers, and it is widely believed that her paintings reveal a hidden meaning. Like this one, with the word God spelled backwards. D-O-G. Do you see it? This painting, entitled Allegory of the Writers, is by Scott Dunn and Joanne Davis. Scott was known for doing many revisions and edits to his paintings, as if trying to reinvent himself. Joanne Davis lived on an island, where she spent years in seclusion writing and painting. They seem at peace here, content with the current revision of their lives, and in harmony with the world. I love the calmness and spirituality of this painting. The artist is Neil Howard. Look at the expression on his face, as if he was keeping something secret. Or is it just a peaceful expression of a production artist content in the art of PDF? Who can really say? What a captivating painting. Ray Wise Gerber was the son of a law enforcer and the town constable. Like his father before him, Ray often policed the world of documentation with amazing fervor and dedication. He reportedly hung a man just for using an incorrect template. Could it be just a rumor? This painting frightens me. Conrad Yose was a master at capturing the highlights and smooth surfaces. Pay special attention to the bald paint. What mastery of light and shade. Conrad was just as famous for his writing and singing skills. It's rumored that he began his young life as a pirate, but no one was ever able to prove that his uncommon wealth came from that venue. As you can see, the documentation age was an age of turmoil and unrest, and the self-portraits created during that time often reflect the confusion and angst of the peasantry. It was a time when people were so caught up in their own lives that they only produced self-portraits. They were certainly a pompous bunch with inflated egos and waistlines, but oh, what wonderful painters they were. Thank you so much for joining me on this delicious journey of art. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Until next time, bye-bye.